tools of world view the belief system right if i'm not mistaken yeah the first topic so first of all welcome everybody i hope you guys are all doing great there i can see you even myself i went out you know of the camera because my computer becomes slow when i on the camera i will try to on it again uh, and if it works fine if it doesn't work i will show you my slides and powerpoint we can still talk to each other is there anything that you want to remind us but cheerful is there anything that you want to share or say with the group uh, i just would like to say thank you to all for joining this uh, session and please uh, make the session interactive with our prof dr abdul razak he's the experts in terms of the topics and i'm really sure you guys have a lot of things to ask him as well so that's it prof oh thank you, thank, thank you, you very prof. much thank you very much thank you very much so today i mean this session is same like the previous session where we have four topics right i mean today would be world view and then another yes today will yeah. be the world view yeah yeah and after then that there will be world another view, subsequent session yeah. on next month yeah next month right okay great great so looks okay so let me start with this you know point normally I, I just want to know some of the participants, you know, the names. I can see the names from the screen, but I will call also some names. I'm sure some of them are there. So please share with me your points while we're in the class. If you have any question, any comment, anything to ask, anything to raise, anything to clarify, please feel free. This is your class. Let me call some names, you know, some names. Hafiza, Aina, are you there, Sister Hafiza? Yes, bro. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine, good. You're doing your master's or PhD in com, is it? Uh, I'm doing master in family medicine. Family medicine, mashallah, mashallah. So is this your first class to join for worldview or? Yeah, this is my first class. Yeah, okay, welcome, welcome to the class. What about Sister Nadiha, or Madiha, sorry, Madiha, AK, are you there? Or maybe while Madiha is getting ready, what about Nazira binti Ahmed? Are you there, Nazira? Hope to know a few guys. I think the number is quite big, but I'm just selecting some names. Anyone want to say before we start? Anyone want to say something? Okay. Look, one view. Oh, or before I start the class, we have this morning, just to update, this morning we have received, you know, the links of some of the videos that were recorded by Professor Muhammad Kamal Hassan in Gomba, you know, with the IIM centuries in Gomba, and they already share the links with us. And the topics that we are going to discuss today and the coming days are also, you know, covered by his talk. So his videos, I mean, you know, the recorded videos and the talks and the topics that we are going to highlight in this class and the coming class will all be linked together and shared it with you, you know, as a whole. So then you can have an access, you know, to the different links, but on the same topic. And of course, we always give priority to Prof. Kamal Hassan's videos and link, I mean, the, the talks because he is the expert and he is known in the field. Uh, but we try to complement and at least to give summary of what Prof. Kamal Hassan will give in details, inshallah. So with that, I would like to begin. Look, when we talk about worldview, some may ask, you know, what does worldview means? Some of you may think that the way, yeah, you know, simply the way you view the world, the way you view the reality of life, the way you view this and that. But actually, yeah, that is true. But actually, if you think about it, the word worldview, the word world, and the word view, you know, the word worldview is a combination of two words, you know, two words. And when you combine the two words, then it, you know, conveys the message or conveys the meaning. So scholars normally, 
normally what they do, they try to analyze the word world and the word view, right? Because the word world here, it doesn't mean only, you know, it to some extent it means the world that we know, the universe, the earth, the planets, uh, the way of life, the human being, and so forth. And therefore, some people, they think that, okay, the worldview basically means the way we see, you know, the reality of life. That's how they, that's how they explain, right? But the scholars normally go beyond that. They say, well, look, the word worldview basically, world means, you know, uh, the existence or reality of life, put in that way. The word world here doesn't mean only the material aspect of life. But the word world basically means the reality of life or the reality of the life that we are living in or the existence as a whole. In other words, when we talk about the world here, this word is not enough. If you are looking at it from the perspective of materialism, let us say, the people who see reality of life is just material or the world that we are living in, then the word world is useful and becomes acceptable. But the ulama normally mention that when we talk about worldview, the word world basically means the reality of life that we are living in now and also the existence as a whole, both in that way. That is what you know the ulama normally or the scholars normally mention. In other words, when we say the word world, we mean the reality of life and the way we, you know, see and interpret the, the reality of life, the way we see the reality as a whole, you know, the world that we are living in, the life that we are living in, including the creations and the creator. In other words, the word worldview basically means the view that we have about the reality of life, put in that way. The view that we have about the reality of life. And when we talk about world view, when we talk about world view, I think there is a correction. There is a need for correction. When we talk about the world view, basically, World view means, but I, I'll make it quite straightforward. World view basically means the basic answers that you give to the basic questions of life. Right? The basic answers that you give to the basic questions of life. That is what we call generally as a world view. And as we all know, we human beings. You know, when we are born as children, as adults, teenagers, you know, regardless of your age, we have some basic questions in life. We have questions, for example, about the origin of life. Basic questions. Where do we come from? Is one of the questions. Another question that we have is, you know, we see that although now we are living, some people are leaving this life. They are, you know, there is a death. Some people are disappearing. Some people are, you know passing away and then we see things are changing you know moving things are not in a static position things are changing you know time to time therefore that condition of life generates a question of where are we going to in other words we realize actually that this life is going to change and this life is going to an end therefore it comes to mind the question that says well where are we going you know where those people who died those people who passed away where are they going you know where are they going that is the question right so then now we have another question when we answer the question of you know the the origin of life as i said when you look into our life we realize actually before we join this life there was a life, you know, there was a time that we did not exist and people existed before us and life existed before us. And then we always think about then surely we join this life. So before here we, we think about where do we come from? Where does life come from? What was the beginning of life? You know, in other words, the origin, the question of origin. 
So one of the basic questions of life is the questions about the questions about the origin. Another question of life is the question about you know the end of life. Where are we going to the future? Another question of life is the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? How to understand life is another question. Huh? Another question that comes to mind as a child, basically, when you are young especially, is what is right and what is wrong, especially when you want to make a judgment. What is good and what is bad? What is moral and what is immoral? What is legal and what is illegal? You know, when those questions come to mind, then it generates, you know, you know, uh, in yourself as a human being, the question about the origin. I mean, the, 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 what do you call the right and wrong, especially when your parents tell you why you are doing, don't do this, do this. This is bad. This is got wrong. This is right. And then you, you have the sense like what is actually right and what is wrong you know, in this life. In other words, the question of value comes to your mind. Where does the value of life is coming from? Who gives the value to life? Another question that you have in mind and that comes to your mind is, you know, when you hear this person, when you hear the scientists talking about, you know, knowing and knowledge, when you talk to scholars, when you talk to educationists, when you talk to your teachers, when you learn something, then people normally in their education, they make claims in their knowledge eh, of what is true and what is false in life. And then it comes to your mind, you know, what is false and what is true. The question of, you know, again, uh, understanding which claims are true, therefore you can accept, which claims are false, therefore you can avoid. So the question of right and wrong is one, and then the question of false and true also comes in mind, right? In other words, put in this way, in other words, as human beings, when we are born, as we grow up, you know, as a human being, as we are growing up, we are having questions that are, you know, there in our mind. Some of the questions are naturally there, you know, whether you like it or not, these questions are there, right? So we have these what do you call basic and essential questions about life. And part of the human nature is human beings are by nature seekers, you know, they seek, you know, to answer those questions. We want to have, we want to, we want, we, we would like to answer those questions, basic childhood questions, basic childhood questions, right? So as we are trying to answer or as we are looking for answers, look, we are actually forming our worldview, uh, not in that way. As we are seeking to answer those childhood questions, actually, we are forming and building and formulating or designing or constructing our worldview as well. Why? Because when we answer the question of origin, the question of end, the question of meaning, the question of value, the question is about true and false, actually what we are doing, basically, we are just forming our worldview. And that normally, the questions that we raise when we answer, those answers form our worldview. And therefore, worldview basically means what? Answering your essential and basic childhood questions, put in that way. When you answer the most essential questions of life, the most basic, most fundamental questions of life, then you are forming your worldview. Therefore, worldview is that are formed by the answers that you give to the you know basic questions of life. Okay, that's number one. I will move a little bit. Therefore, therefore, as you can see from my slide. Worldview basically means, you see here, a comprehensive conception of the world or reality of life held by an individual or group of people through which reality of life is understood and interpreted. So that is what basically worldview means, a comprehensive conception that is covering all aspects of life. Right? 
So when you are asked the question of origin, you have answers for it. When you are asked the questions of end, you have answers for it. When you are asked the questions of value, true and false, then you have answers for it, right? And therefore, that is what worldview is all about. Some people, they said, well, rather than using the word conception, they use the word, it is a vision of life, put in that way, that you and I have, and every one of us have, a mental framework or a set of fundamental beliefs through which we view the world. You see that? We view the world and our calling and future in it. In other words, put it in a very simple way, worldview basically means a vision of life or mental framework, a fundamental beliefs through which we view the world and we interpret the world, uh, put it that way. In other words, worldview is a mental screen, put it that way, mental screen or mental schema through which we explain and interpret life right and that screen through which we interpret and explain the world that screen actually is formed by your answers to the fundamental questions of life in other words normally the ulama mentioned that worldview basically functions same as your optics or glasses you know a function Nowadays, I think some of us are already wearing glasses. So normally, when you wear glasses, the op, you know, the, 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 the optical glasses, actually, these glasses is helping you to view or see the outside world, right? So if your glass is dark, then life is, you know, everything out there is dark or black. If your glasses are green, then everything out there is green. If your glasses are red, everything out there is red. So in other words, if your glasses are also clean and nice and, 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 you know, what do you call effective, then your vision about the material things out there is also effective and clean. So same as your glass helps your eyes to see, you know, the outside world. Similarly, a worldview functions you know, in us that way, you know, it, in other words, your mental screen, your mental glasses, your mental schema helps you to view and see the reality out there, you know, what the reality is all about, right? And your glass, you know, mental screen, eh? your mental schema or your mental framework is actually formed, as you can see here, the keyword is a collection of beliefs. Collection of belief. Collection of belief basically means you have belief about where life comes from, you have belief about it. Where life is going to, you have belief about it. What is the meaning of life, you have belief about it. What is true and what is false, you have belief about it. You have what is you know right and wrong, you know, morally, you have belief about it. So when you put all these beliefs together, these fundamental beliefs, then they form what is known as a worldview or vision of life. Your eyes, your mental glass, your mental eyes, right? So in order to define what worldview is all about, normally, normally people in the field use the word collection of beliefs, yes, conceptual schema, yes, exist, existential concepts, yes, overall perspective of life, yes. So put in this way, worldview basically <laughs> means, make it very simple, worldview basically means the way you view life. And the way we view life here, we don't mean you wear your glasses and then you view the material world out there, the physical world out there, no. Actually, basically, simply means your fundamental answers into the fundamental questions of life. That is what is known as a worldview. Prof? Yes. Prof, yes. For disturbing you. Is it no. possible if you make uh, the view becoming slideshow so that it's much bigger for the participants to view? Okay, great, great. Yeah. Can you see it now? I already make it, uh, you know. Mm. Is it clear now? Uh, it still remain the same. Oh, okay. That means 
I don't know. Okay, let me. I try again, yeah. Okay, maybe if I'll stop cannot, sharing and then I'll just shoot okay. the problem. Huh? If cannot, it's okay. Yeah, let me reshare again and the show. Okay. Mm. Can you see it now? Can is it is it a uh... Uh, it's the same problem, but I think it's okay. It's the same. Yeah. Can, can just it up. yeah. I'm having difficulty to, you know. Yeah. It's okay, prof. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And show, right? Okay. I think I, if I change it, then it doesn't show. I don't know. Okay. Can someone share back mm, the attending? Okay. That one is a different question. Fine. No, it's not okay. Clear. Okay, it's okay. okay. So I will proceed. Yes, I think this I is think what I can. Do. So I will proceed with what I can. Huh? Mm. Okay, so put it in a very simple way. Worldview basically means the you know the fundamental answers that you give to the fundamental questions of life. Look here, the fundamental questions of life is something that we can all have, all human beings, whether you are living in Asia or you are, you are born somewhere in Latin America or in North America or you are born in Africa or Asia or Europe, doesn't matter. As human beings, when we are born and, you know, as a child, normally as, as a human being, these questions are there, put it that way. So what we share generally, what we share is having the fundamental questions about life. But what makes us different, what makes us different is the way we answer to the fundamental questions of life are different. Therefore, your belief or your view about the reality of life depends the way you answer your fundamental questions of life. So although we share fundamental questions of life, but yet, the way we answer differs from one group to another, from one religious uh, tradition to another tradition, from one society to another, and therefore we have different beliefs and different worldviews. Okay, look, worldviews, as I said, we share the fundamental questions of life, but the way we answer the questions of life differs, right? And therefore, our worldviews are different. And therefore, today we have two major categories of, or two major groups of worldviews today. Can you see my slide? Yes, Prof. Yeah. I, if you notice that, I, you know, I share a colorful slide. The colorful slide. Can you see it? Yes, Prof. Hmm. So generally, we have two ways. Yeah? Generally, we have two ways of answering the fundamental questions of life generally, although we share the fundamental questions of life. So we either have conventional approaches and ideologies. We answer the questions of life through conventional you know, ideologies. Or we answer the fundamental questions of life through religious worldviews. And when we talk about conventional ideologies and conventional approaches, we have those who have answered it, you know, the questions of life through philosophical ideologies or philosophical approaches like materialism, positivism, secularism, modernism, and postmodernism. These are all related ideologies and approaches of life which have tried to answer the questions of life through their, you know, their philosophical approaches. And then we have those who have conventional approaches and ideologies, you know, that has, you know, answered it or that have answered it, the basic questions of life through scientific worldviews and ideologies, put it that way. In other words, 
within the conventional approaches, we have philosophical ideologies and we have scientism or the spirit that says only science is true. Scientism basically means only science is true. And therefore it is the belief in the efficiency and you know, ability of science to answer all our problems or all questions of life. It's a long discussion there, but basically put it that way. Then we come to the religious worldviews. We have also, you know, different approaches as well there within the religious worldview. So we have, for example, you know, we have those groups who have answered the fundamental questions of life through religious worldviews. And we have here, like, for example, Islamic worldview or Islamic belief or Islamic beliefs that are answering the fundamental questions of life. We have other religious worldviews, for example, that are like Judeo-Christian worldview, Jewish and Christianity, for example, where they also have answers to the fundamental questions of life. And then we have other uh, religious traditions like Hinduism, Buddhism, and other, you know, traditional ways of answering the fundamental questions of life. So generally, this is just an overview because as I said, I'm just sharing with you some basic overviews because the, you know, inshallah, you will have the detailed discussion in the, in the links that I'm going to share with you, share it this morning by, you know, Santis Gomba and, you know, the talks given by Prof. Kamal Hassan, who will give you some of, you know, the details that are, you know, about worldview. So generally when we look into worldviews, generally, worldviews can be classified into two major groups, conventional approaches and ideologies and religious worldviews. Conventional approaches are like philosophical, scientific, scientism, and then you have materialism, positivism, secularism, which have actually differences in their approach in answering the fundamental questions of life. And then you have religious groups, generally, that are also you know, providing answers to the basic questions of life. But in their answers, they also have differences, you know, in answering the fundamental questions of life. And Islamic worldview is one of the religious, you know, worldviews, as you can see here, which is our focus now. Then to proceed a little bit, to proceed a little bit, when we talk about you know, I was just mentioning, you know, just now I was mentioning that worldview basically means answering the fundamental questions of life. These are the fundamental questions of life. You can see, you can, this is an overview, you know, overview. Basically, those in the field of philosophy and also theology, they classify normally, they classify, you know, the questions of life into certain category. Mm. So you can have, basically, you have thousands of questions in life. But those thousands of questions of life can be categorized under, you know, these seven fundamental questions of life. You can see here. So as a human being, as a child, as an adult, as a teenage, someone growing or someone, you know, realizing life, you know, you have these seven fundamental questions of life, which you need to answer, right? So as a child, for example, as an adult, you have the question of what is life? Put in that way. What is the meaning of life? You see, you are looking for meaning. You are looking to understand life. So what is life? So when you say what is life, basically, remember, you are looking for modeling the reality of life as a whole. You see the mountains, you see clouds, you see skies. You see atoms, you see cells, you see, you know, tissues, you see, you know, oxygens. You, you, you have different elements within the, the world, right? And then it comes to your mind, hey, wait a minute. Can, can I have the whole picture, you know, of life? What life is all about? What is life? You see, the rocks, the atoms, the oxygens the bio, the living thing, the non-living thing. You have a variety of, you know, uh, different things of life, right? So your mind goes to modeling reality of life as a whole. And not only looking for a model of life, 
you also look for meaning of life and degrees of existence as well. Who is who and who is different from what and what is what makes. Sometimes you see living and non-living thing. Within the living thing, then you have different categories as well, animals and plants. Within animal kingdom, you have also human beings, the rational being, and then you have animals. And within animal, you know what you call animals, you have different categories as well, different species, right? So your mind looks for, you know what you call model, meaning, and the degrees of our existence. Who is who? And who is different from what? And who belongs to what category? Our mind screens the reality of life. And normally the ulama said, when we search that territory and we want to understand and make sense of that area, we are in the field of ontology, they call it. Philosophical discipline, that is known as ontology. Ontology answers the questions about the model, the meaning, and the degrees of existence, right? So we call it ontology. So now when your mind makes a modeling, when your mind structures, put in that way, reality, then your mind now talks about, wait a minute, now I understand, you know, you divide life, for example, as a Muslim, creator and creations, khaliq wa makhluqat. And then within creations, you have living thing and non-living thing. Within the living thing, then when you model all of this, it comes to your mind. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does it all come from? Now you look for, yes, now I model it life, structure it in mind, but can I know where it comes from? And then now you look for explanation in the past, what happened before, the model of the past, the origin and the development of life. And in answering that, actually, normally, we have different theories. Like, for example, we have creationists, generally. Eh? We call group this group of creationists. And creationists, basically, majority of religious worldviews are creationists, put in that way. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, and others, they are all creationists. Creationist means your belief that this life has been created, and therefore, you believe that the origin of life is the one that was created by God, by its Lord, right? Khalq, right? And nowadays, and of course before, you know, a long time ago, since a long time ago, we have these, you know, also group of people who are thinking that actually, no, we evolve or evolutionist, right? So we have two groups. Either you are evolutionist, whereby you believe that this universe has evolved, although you are not answering where does it evolve it from, but you just believe that this universe, the origin of life is evolution, and therefore it has evolved. Or you believe that the universe has been created, and therefore you look for the creator, all right? But what we share in common, we cannot go into the details between creationist and evolutionist, right? What they share in common is they both have concern about where does life come from? Although now they are answering the, this question in different way. So now when your mind answers the question of origin, then your, your mind jumps you know, to the end again because you see everything is changing. There is a flex and change in life. You know, even yourself is changing, right? The person you were, how many years ago, you are not that person anymore. And then we see that our grandfathers, our fathers, some of them are passing away. And then, you know, there is a change. New generation is, you know, coming up. The old generation is disappearing. And then you realize that there is a movement. There is a flux and change in this life. And then it comes to your mind like, oh, wait a minute. The model of the future. What happens next? Now we are here. So what the future holds? or what comes next is another question that comes to your mind. The end of life. So, um, Prof, yes. I think someone would like to ask you a question. Dr. Sure, Ong sure. Seng. Yes, any any question please, feel free. In the chat, is it? I, I think uh, the person would like to ask verbally. Because- Oh, uh, okay, sure. Are you re somebody raising his hand or her hand? Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. 
Sorry, I think I mis mistakenly pressed the, the button. I'm so sorry. Oh, right. oh. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. please, please, please. Ask ask We're very happy with the last question. Yes. If you have questions, please share in the chat or raise your hand and then I will give you a chance, inshallah. So then, as you can see here, the third question is about the end. And therefore, people also now, different belief systems and different ideologies have different answer to the question about the future. So for example, we have uh, generally religious worldviews, they talk about the another life. They talk about another life. But even their approach or their answer to another life, they have differences. You have, for example, let us say Muslims and Jews and Christians generally agreeing to have what we call another life, whereby all our deeds are being accounted, right? In, in the Islamic worldview, for example, we believe in Akhirah, the second, you know, uh, place to live or the second life, right? al -Akhra. In other words, when we die now, that is not the end of our life. We begin another life, right? So the end of your life now, the question is, is it the end of your story? That is the question. When somebody dies, is that the end of our story of life? Or we are having a beginning of another life? Yep. Then we have a different answers to this question now. We have Muslims, for example, if I give you the Islamic worldview. Yes, we believe the death of the person means the beginning of another chapter of life. Right? And then we talk about Akhirah, we talk about Yom al qiyamah we talk a lot of, you know... Uh, details and activities after life right then we end up to be either in hell or in you know what do you call heaven then when you talk to our buddhist and hindu friends for example i hope if some if anyone from those religious traditions can correct me they also talk about the issue of nirvana because through karma samsara then you have nirvana and then you have the you know what do you call the cycle of life and cycle of path and then they have a different interpretation as well Right. Just to just to make a comment, I'm giving now I'm giving an overview about the worldviews today because the details of epistemology, axiology, and other details will be given by other lecturers. So my job is just to give you overview. So I am not now specifically focusing on any worldview, but let us say if we have a non-Muslim student, for example, I'm giving examples from the Islamic worldview perspective. So, well, that would be, you know, a, a chance for you to know more about the Islamic worldview. But if you have examples from, let us say, from your faith, if, if there is a non-Muslim student, we are here to learn from each other. So we welcome if you have examples to share with us. So please feel free and welcome to the class. Because although we are focusing on the Islamic worldview, but we also want to hear from people of you know, other religious perspectives to share their answers and also examples to this, you know, topic. Because this topic is something that we all share, the worldview, right? And we want to understand each other. And basically, we are here to learn from each other. We are not here to hate each other. We don't have chance. Or we don't have, what? We are not here to hate each other, but in that way. This is a chance of learning from each other, knowing, you know, each other, you know, through our beliefs, right? So if there is any example given from other religious perspectives, please feel free because this is a learning process from each other. Okay, so now when you answer those three questions, put in this way, question of what is, where does it come from, and where are we going to? Look, the answers that we give to the, these three questions normally form what is generally known as a theology or ontology you know they are very closely related the two subjects but philosophers they call it ontology but religious groups they call it theology put in that way but the two subjects theology and ontology are closely related so these three questions are actually the meaning the origin and end of life put in that way they belong to each other form one category of thought hmm? Now, when you answer those three questions, that's not the end of the story. You see, in your life, there are things that is permissible to do, and there are things that are not permissible to do. And therefore, it immediately generates 
the sense of the value of life. And therefore you think about what is good and what is evil, right? Hmm. And then you, 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 you think about it and then you try to answer that question, right? And the answers you give to that basically comes from what? From your religion, from your akhlaq, from ethics, from manners, etiquettes, adab, all this one together we call it the value system, right? So you are asking about the value system. And therefore we call it that field, when you answer those together, you put the law, ethics, manners, etiquettes, protocols, all this one when you put together, normally the ulama they call it axiology or axioms of life or theory of values, morality or, or what is wrong and what is right. So we develop that you know, field as well. Because we want to act, we want to judge, we want to decide, we want to give a verdict, right, of what is right and what is wrong, right? And therefore we need that aspect as well. Then, not only that the value system is, the values of governing of life is important, but also another area that your mind thinks about is about the theory of actions. How should we act? How? Extremely? Negligently? Or moderately? You see that? It's very much related to the, first, you know, to the previous question of, of evil and good. So our mind always wants to know the limitations of our actions. Right? How? How? Tell me how. Right? No how. So let us say now, you have... You, you want to act in a good way. You have, somebody want to act in a good way. But if I act on this good way, is there a case where I may exceed the limit of good? Right? So now I'm doing good. But if I exceed the limit, it turns bad. Right? Therefore, we call extremism. Right? Or there are cases you know the good, but you are not acting accordingly, or you are not acting according to the good thing that you know. So in other words, you are ignoring or you are neglecting it. You see that? So between negligence and extremism, we have moderation in the middle. So the question here is, how can I achieve the optimum, but in that way, the moderate, the excellent way between negligence and extremism, therefore my actions become meaningful. And there is a whole subject there in that you know topic. They call it praxeology or theory of actions, right? Moderation curve, extremism curve, or negligence in the middle. Then we have another theory, another question that so this together again, question number four and question number five, they form what is generally known in philosophy as axiology. First three, they form ontology. The first, I mean, the, 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 the fourth and fifth, they form axiology or akhlaq, right? Or value system. Number six and seven, actually, they form together what is known as epistemology or the question of what is true and what is false and the validity of our ideas, right? So then we are talking about the theory of knowledge meaning, validity, divisions, and authenticity of knowledge. Everybody is claiming that they know the truth. So who is telling me the truth? Is it my mind? Is it revelation and religion? Or is it science? What happens if science itself becomes myth? Because scientists keep changing their mind. So is it possible to doubt in science itself? After all, science is just human-made ideas. Right? And the humans are not perfect. Humans are available, actually. They can make mistakes. So what, what happens if, if, if the scientists are cheating us? What happens if the scientists are telling us lies, right? Is it possible to think in that way? Or actually we trust in science? Scientists are telling us the truth. Scientifically proven. When somebody says, according to scientists, then we trust in science. Or oh, there is a whole lot of... What happens is we, if, we, if we distrust science and we trust our mind, logic, reasoning, can we trust our mind? Yes, for good ideas, yes. But wait a minute, 
How many times we trusted our mind and then we get cheated or we get wrong, especially in math, right? There are cases where we trust our mind and then all of a sudden, later on, we find out actually we make a mistake. We were wrong, even though we trusted our mind. So the question here is, in order to get true knowledge of the reality of life, what is the source that we can trust? Is it the mind? Is it science? Is it tradition? Is it what? Stories? Who? Who is telling the truth? So when that question comes in mind, then we are in the field of epistemology. Epistemology means knowledge. Logy means the study of our knowledge. So we, we study our knowledge itself, which one is true and which one is false. The whole subject. So the, you have science, you have education, you have schools of you know, learning, you have a huge you know, fields of you know, developing knowledge again, measuring knowledge, you know, authenticating of knowledge, and you know, different methods are there. Okay, look, when we talk about worldview, as you can see, it in, you know, answers to these seven basic questions of life. These seven questions of life, the first three, together we call them ontology. And that is about your belief about the model, the meaning, the degrees of life, and also the past and the future. Together we call it ontology. Third, I mean, fourth and fifth, we call it axiology or the value systems. What is good and what is bad, what is haram, what's halal, you know, what's evil and what is not. Six, six and seven, we call it epistemology. In other words, your mind, whatever that is in your mind, now put it in that way, regardless of your faith, regardless of your religion, whatever that is in your mind can be categorized or classified into three major blocks. Uh, put it in that way, make it simple. Three major blocks of mind. Either, you know, one third, one third of your mind focuses on your belief is about the origin, the reality, the meaning, the degrees, the past, and the future of life. Generally, philosophers, they call that area ontology, but theology, religious groups, they call it theology, or belief about God. We'll see later on in the reality of life. Ilm hmm? al right? The, the second building block of your mind focuses on the value system. What is true, uh, sorry, what is evil and what is good? Therefore, you have adab, you have akhlaq, you have manners, you have laws, you have protocols, you have etiquette, you have a whole bunch of studies as well. There are fields, right, within that field. The third building block of your mind focuses on knowledge, true and false of, you know, ideas validity of your thoughts right so now think about this make it very simple in fact this slide itself is enough if you want to understand what worldview is all about this slide is actually an overview of what worldview basically means so when somebody tells you about what is worldview you can simply answer that worldview means the answers that you give to the fundamental questions of life very simple straightforward but remember our answers to the fundamental questions of life always differ depending on our belief system. Very interesting. Although the questions, the fundamental questions of life is something that we all share, right? But the way we answer differs. And therefore, our traditions, our religions, our faiths, our cultures, our customs differ from one group to another. If I go a little bit, little bit, you know, and then now you may ask, what are the basic elements of worldview? Can you see my slide? I want to make sure that I'm, we guys are in the same. We can see, Prof. Yeah, the one, uh, have you seen the one I was sharing just now, the fundamental questions? You saw it? Yes, yes. And now I am in the blue, the blue color, yeah, right? You are in slide number five now, yeah. Yes, slide number five. Elements of worldview, very simple. And then, seeing as this, Class today is an overview. I just want to share with you, you know, an overview about the basic elements of worldview. Now, just now what I shared with you was a concise overview, concise overview about 
another classification of all views and concise overview about the fundamental equations of life. Now I will move to the elements, the basic elements. When we talk about worldview, now these are the details of the previous slide. The previous slide was a summary, and this is a little bit of details, you know, of the, the slide before, slide number four. Slide number five is the detail, detailed account of slide number four. Sorry, slide number five is the detailed account of slide number four. <laughs> That's what I want to say. So when we talk about worldview, look, we have epistemology, metaphysics, cosmology, anthropology, theology, teleology, axiology, and epistemology. I mean, yes, eschatology, sorry. Of course, they, if you notice that all of them, not all of them, most of the words that I have used or the fields that I have mentioned here, they have the word logi, right? <laughs> and you will hear philosophers always using that word. The word logi is a Greek word, if I'm not mistaken, and it basically means the study of or the logic of or the understanding of something. So now we have society and when we study the society, we call it sociology, right? Society, sociology or the logic of how our la the life of our society functions. We have psychology, right? So means psycho means our soul, I mean our psyche and then the logic or the study of our psycho. Same goes here. Epistemo means knowledge. Logic means the study of our knowledge. Metaphysics basically is a, is, is, is a, a different field. Meta in English means beyond or after. And physics means the material world, the physical world, the thing that we can measure in time and space. So when we use the word metaphysics, basically means the reality that is existing beyond our physical world. And therefore we are talking about the soul, God, Akhira, angels, and so forth. In other words, alam al in Islamic studies or Islamic tradition, right? Then we have cosmo, that is a cosmos, the universe, and then logi, the study of our cosmos, right? The question is that we answer just now. Then we have anthropology. Anthro, anthropology basically means the human society's origins and development and the study of that, the study about the human nature, development, and, you know, growth, anthropology, or the nature of a human being. Or put it that way, some philosophers, they would like the identity of man and women. Where does man come from? We will see later on. Huh? Theology, theo basically means God. Logi means the study about God. And therefore, we call in the Islamic studies, ilmu tawheed, right? Right. And then teleology, teleo basically means aim. So logi means the study. So it means the study about the aims of life, all right? And then we have axio, which basically means value. And logi means the study, the logic of our axioms of life, the values of life. Eschatology basically means, eschato means the end. Logic means the study. In other words, the study about the end of life. So these are the. So let me go into the details of these, you know, elements. Number one, epistemology, right? So basic ideas of epistemology is about the, the beliefs about the nature and source of knowledge. We have beliefs. All of us have belief about where our knowledge comes from, right? Is knowledge merely state of the mind, brain? Or knowledge have reality beyond that? Does it come from the sense experience? You see here, very critical question, right? Where does our knowledge come from? Right? In other words, is it, is it true that only our five senses are the channels of knowing the truth? Or actually, our mind can know things without our five senses? So which one? Is the mind the source of knowledge or the five senses are the source of knowledge? It's a question that is always raised. You know? Is there anything that one can know for certain? Or actually we are living in a total doubt. Nothing is certain. Nothing is yaqeen. Nothing. Oh, actually there are things which are certain. Yaqeen, for sure. It's another question. Is there a knowledge from beyond the sense? If, let us say, somebody is born without the sense, let us say the five senses, ears, sight, hearing, 
no you know smell and touch let us say if this organs or these you know senses are blocked is it possible to know anything beyond hmm? is it possible that we can grasp or develop knowledge without using the five senses or actually we are you know uh, how do you say hold or controlled by our five senses in other words we are imprisoned within the senses without the sense we cannot know anything is is a question that is you know raised and discussed in the uh, what do you call the study of philosophy and you will see later on in the testimony so when we are in metaphysics actually the basic equations of metaphysics are what is the ultimate reality of nature now when we look into you know the planets orbits galaxies you know mountains clouds stars you know moons when we see this we see the nature you know material you know acting and interacting and then effect and co cause and effect is there so can we say look the ultimate reality of nature is just material nothing beyond or oh, actually there is a immaterial reality or a spiritual reality that is beyond nature which one so we have groups answering that question right is everything matter and energy as we said just now everything is just matter and energy nothing beyond nothing spiritual nothing metaphysical or what is the truth wait a minute we want to know what is the truth is it truth is just material or there is a truth that is immaterial the soul god akhira how to understand those you know uh, things right is reality discovered empirically empirically means scientifically but in that way through empirical methods right experimental methods in other words is reality only that which can be experimented what happens if something cannot be experimented in the lab can we deny its existence let us say the soul we conducted an experiment and we cannot see the soul of a human being can we deny the existence of soul ah, it's a very critical question of metaphysics right so we answer those questions in worldview now we have another field of worldview that is cosmo or cosmos the origin of the universe you know and life life and human being that is very important who is human being where life come from you know who generated it who caused it to exist is one of the basic questions of, uh, of, of worldview is the universe again this is one critical question of cosmology is the universe a chance event whereby we are all here by chance no one else no one created us no one caused us to exist but we are here all by chance or actually the universe did not come here as a chance but here it came as you know it came to here it has been created uh, put in that way in other words being caused by another cause in other words has the universe existed as a chance event or it was created we have then you know of course uh, answers to that did life originated by purely natural causes in other words as universe is universe being created itself by itself whereby natural laws of the universe created itself is a question because nowadays when you talk to some atheists for example those who deny the existence of god they simply tell you look this universe is being created by natural law so that means natural laws are the laws of nature in other words nature created itself by itself by natural causes which the mind cannot accept actually the mind denies that did humanity originated by chance look some of them they told you well you know what if you look to reality of life we are part of the living kingdom so our life has fluctuated one time life was you know big and gigantic creatures lived here dinosaurs and all you know big animals live it and then climate change after millions of years and then living organisms grow up in our earth and then change it and fluctuate it eventually monkeys and then apes and then we have human beings oh wait a minute <laughs> in other words humanity existed here as a chance 
but a different interpretation, of course, is there, you know, presented by uh, different religious worldviews, right? Whereby we are created with a task and duty to achieve. Then we have the questions of teleology, or teleology basically means aims of life, or aim, or objective. Does, have, does life have any aim? Or actually life is just aimless? Is life, are we living in a giant machine whereby we don't know why we are here, we don't know where we are heading to, we do not know uh, the reasons why, why, we cannot answer. Is it, is it, is it true that this life is just what? We, we only know that we are here, but why we don't know. Can we put it in that way? Or actually we can know why. Why? Because if you look into our life, every single element of our life has a, you know, what you call aim to achieve. In other words, we are aim directed or aim designed our life. For example, now we have house, we design our house. Why? Because we want to protect ourselves from heat and cool. So in other words, even the design, design of our life, our, our, what do you call house, is driven by the aim behind it. We design the roads and highways. The reason behind it is to connect our cities and villages, right? We design the car and machines. Why? Because we need to transport ourselves from this place to other place. So in other words, every element of our life is drive it by an aim, right, and design. Even our body, if you look into our body, our heart keeps beating, you know. Why? Because the aim is to circulate the blood in the body. Okay. In other words, in this life, nothing is without aim. Okay, fine. Then now we ask, what about the whole life, the life itself? Is it aimless or is aimful? There you go. There you go, right? So the question about the purpose of the cosmos. Is there any reason or purpose or end for the cosmos? If there is a purpose, then whose purpose? Yes. Then if there is a purpose, what is the purpose would be? Now that, so... In answering to those questions, which actually Islamic worldview have answers as well, to these questions, we are in the subject called teleology, normally studied in worldviews. And you will see, you know, coming lecture, inshallah, will share with you. The existence and nature. Here now we have theology. Theo basically means God. Logi means the study about God, or ilmu tawheed, or understanding about God, put in that way, or belief about God, put in that way. So you have the questions about the existence and the nature of God, all the ultimate being, who is he? Some people maybe don't believe in God, but still they believe the ultimate being or the ultimate reality of life, a universal spirit. They have different beliefs, right? Is there a God or there are many gods? For example, polytheism or shirik, they believe the existence of many gods. What is the relationship between God and the universe is also another important subject, right? Mm. So, is it is the God creator of the universe, or actually God did not create the universe? It's a deep discussion. There is a deep discussion there, but is one of the major questions of life. What is the relationship of God to man as well? Ah, not only to the universe, but also to the human being. Very important. You know, question as well there. So now when you answer those questions, theology, teleology, cosmology, and epistemology, then you come to the identity of man now. Who is, who is this creature, man? Because when we look into man, man and women, of course, when we talk about man, I'm talking about al-insan. I'm not excluding women. Eh? So when we talk about al-insan, when you look into his life, on one side, you see man as like any other material world because we have biology, we have bio, right? We have these atoms and cells, right? Our body is made from material components, right? But we have some, you know, characteristics which, are, which makes us different from living things as well, right? So man's nature is quite interesting, actually, because when you look into his mind, 
thoughts, ideas, intellect in general, when you look into his ability, the intellectual ability, the mental ability, the spiritual ability, then surely man is different from the rest of creations. So one of the major questions of worldview is to understand the nature of humanity. Who is this makhluk? Who is, you know, the identity of man? Could it be that man is a grown-up animal, like what Darwinism tells us, whereby we got grown up from, you know, monkeys through apes? Or actually man is someone who is being created with a special task and a special character and given a special task and to perform a special job and given a special, you know, characteristics. Like Islamic worldview talks about khalifah, right? We are khalifah created by God with a special task and a special characteristics, right? Are human beings good when you look into what humanity is doing to each other now? You see, sometimes you see human beings torturing each other, killing each other, murdering each other, you know, raping each other, right? And then, uh, you know, when you see like, for example, throwing bombs like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you know, mass murderer, right? Mass killing. And then what comes to your mind? And then you say, hey, wait a minute. I think human beings are by nature evil. Why? Because they are doing evil things to each other, killing, torturing, imprisoning, right? Lying about each other, gossip, gossip, backbiting each other, right? Wow. And then it comes to your mind. Oh, I know human beings are by nature evil. Oh, actually, on the other side, when you see how human beings are kind, merciful, you know, through the act of charity, helping each other, how, you know, organizations are helping, you know, the orphans, the needy people, you know, discoveries, the, the, the neighbor, good neighborhood connection. When you see all of this, and then it comes to your mind, hey, wait a minute, actually human beings are by nature good. So we have discussion is there. Are humans by nature good or humans are by nature evil? We have long discussion there, right? Does man has free will? <laughs> are we like a programming machine whereby we have no choice? All the acts that we are doing are being pretty programmed, pretty set, whereby we have no choice. Or well, actually, we are choiceful, right? Because when you look into when you look into the aspects of man whereby you have no choice, for example, you didn't choose your gender, for example, whether to be male or female. You didn't choose, you have no choice and free will, for example, to be born in this generation of ours, for example, 90s or 20s. You have no choice. You are not being consulted, right? You have not been also consulted to which, which ethnic or race or region you are going to be born in this world. You are not being consulted and you have no choice in that, right? You also have no choice when you look into your body. For example, now your heart will not consult you to provide and circulate, you know, blood into the cells of your body. Whether you are sleeping, whether you are angry, whether you are happy, your heart will keep beating, you know, and providing, you know, this service of circulating the blood in the body. It's not, it's not under your control. It's beyond actually, right? Hmm. So now, when you look into that aspect, then you say, hey, human beings are like what? Like any other machine, pretty programmed. We have no choice and free will at all. And when you look into the other side, when you see like the choices that we are making in life, the decisions that we are taking in office, who to marry to, you know, what to buy, what eat, food to eat today, you know, what to study, what kind of person to be in life. You know, when you see the choices that we are making and then you say, wait a minute, Human beings are by nature free, right? <laughs> so there you have also a big challenge and big, you know, issue there. Are human beings merely advanced animal? I think I mentioned that. Is there a such thing called human nature? Or actually we are just animal nature, put in that way. Which one? Hmm. Finally, when you answer those questions, you come to the question of axiology, axioms of life right and wrong, the nature and the study of values. What is the ultimate and the highest good? Is it a peace, self-actualization, pleasure or knowledge? Normally people are looking for happiness, 
the highest value, right? Right? So now the question is, what is the highest good? Is it that when you have knowledge, you achieve the highest good? Or actually money, money and cash, currency is the highest good? Or actually self-actualization, even though you don't have money, you don't have good education, but as long as you are actualizing yourself, you are existing truly in this life, you actually uh, the highest good. Or maybe the highest good is pleasure to enjoy life, drinking, dancing, and dying eventually. You know, in other words, pleasure could be pleasure in the form of, you know, material pleasure or spiritual pleasure. Some people, they, you know, they don't care about material pleasure. They care about spiritual pleasure. So which one? Ah, pleasure. What, what is the highest good? Of course, in Islam, the highest good is to, to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But philosophically, people are discussing about which one, right? Are there intrinsic values in life? Because sometimes you, you feel that, hmm, you know, value sometimes you need to understand, you know. For example, if an animal kills you, let us say a tiger eats a human being, we blame that tiger, then we call Tigers are by nature evil, right? Wild animal. Not by nature, wild animal. Lions, we call them wild animal. But if a human being kills a tiger, you bench the tiger on the face, people will call you hero, right? So when you bench a tiger on the face, they call you hero. But when a tiger kills you, they call the tiger wild animal. Mm, values are changing, right? So maybe values have no intrinsic Value, what do you call meaning? No, actually the values have intrinsic meaning. But how to find it? Yes, then inshallah you will study in the coming classes. What uh, or who determines the value? The revelation, the mind, the manfa'ah, the outcome, or the principle? Again, we have seven theories when we talk about, you know, how to determine the values as well. Are there morals actually? If they are, are they objective or morals are subjective? In other words, it depends on the culture, the community, the age, all these ones. Are they going to determine the values or actually values exist objectively beyond all of this, right? Therefore, when we talk about worldviews, as you can see, worldviews involve these seven building blocks. And the seven building blocks are actually interconnected, as you can see here. Just remember just now I meant I told you ontology, the future, the past, the model of the past, the axiology, the actions, and then you have true and false, and then you have etiology. So are they connected? Yes. How many building blocks? Seven. How are they interrelated? They are all connected, as you can see here. In other words, your mind can be classified into seven building blocks. And that seven building blocks are not a thing, a thing. They are not separated. They are actually connected to each other. And you can see these examples as well. Well, this is a quick overview, I could say. This is a quick overview of what worldview is all about, right? Seven building blocks that are actually formed by the answers that we give to the basic questions of life. I didn't talk about the details about the Islamic worldview. I didn't touch the details of other worldviews, but I just give you an overview, running over, right? It's a one hour and a half, but I, I summarize it. I have to do it quickly because I have another class at 4 p.m. So I have to rush. I didn't go, uh, you know, uh, into the details, but I give you an overview, a quick overview. Why? Because the detailed discussions will be in the links that I'm going to share with CBS and I'm going to share with Dr. Shayful as well, the, you know, the organizer. And inshallah, you will see in Prof. Kamal Hassan's, you know, uh, talk. Yes, Sud Lai Liu is raising his hand. Yes. Yes, please, go ahead. Dr. Sweet, are you going to ask question? No, sorry, I accidentally. All right. Oh, okay, uh, no worries. I thought you have a question. 
So inshallah the detailed discussion will be in Prof Kamal Hassan's hmm. Prof, Prof, uh, can, can we open for Q&A now? Uh, so please, if you have questions, please raise up your hand and share your thoughts, please. This is just a quick overview. Dear participants, you have any questions to our Prof? A quick overview, I call it, one hour and a half overview, because the details are coming, inshallah, in the recorded videos of Prof Kamal Hassan and other, ex other expertise. Prof, uh, I think uh, just to end our session, can I just ask one question on the behalf sure, of all please. the participants? Sure, so, sure, please. Uh, I think nowadays that the culture of academic medicine holds implicit and explicit assumptions about what is important in life, including mm. assumptions about health and the practice of medicine, and the philosophy mm. of life consists of a worldview from which medicine is practiced. So is it mm. right that we say that the, the worldview is basically one of the basis in form formation of medical ethics and professionalism what do you think of prof yeah because when we talk about you know generally this is my understanding when we talk about medical ethics medical ethics actually is part of applied ethics and applied ethics actually is a field of ethics that uses you know theoretical values to solve practical issues of life everyday life in clinics in all you know healthcare settings right and therefore, when we talk about applied ethics or professional ethics generally, including engineering ethics and medicine ethics, generally, these ethics is an extension of theoretical ethics. And theoretical ethics, when we go, is actually part and parcel of the axiology that we talk about. So ethics generally forms one third of our worldview, put in that way. When we talk about worldview, one third of our worldview is ethics, right? And another third is, you know what you call epistemology or knowledge. Another building block or third, you know, one third is ontology. So akhlaq, whether you are holding, let us say, this worldview or that worldview, always ethics, whether it's the applied ethics like medicine and engineering and, you know, financial ethics, the applied ethics is part and or an extension of our, you know, theoretical ethics, which is actually part and parcel of our worldview, uh, put in that way. In other words, our worldview is incomplete without talking about ethics. So that is how I like to connect. And number two, medicine is also related to worldview, not only through, you know, not only medicine is linked to worldview through ethics, but medicine is also linked to worldview through science. Why? Because medicine basically comes from natural science that is applied, right? When you apply biology, chemistry, and physics, then you develop medicine. So when you now develop medicine, in a sense, medicine is applied natural science. Same like engineering, right? And therefore, when you talk about science, then you are now being connected back to epistemology on the other side. And then epistemology basically means knowledge, including science, revelation, traditions. You know, we have concepts. It's, it's a huge subject, actually. I don't want to go into it now. So medicine, part of medicine comes from epistemology. Part of medicine comes from axiology. And part of medicine also is connected to our belief system, the ontology or aqaid, right? So basically, medicine is connected to worldview through these three building blocks. In other words, medicine is an essential element of worldviews, whether we like it or not. Why? Because as a, let us say, as a science, medicine as a science is part of epistemology. Medicine as an ethics or medical ethics is part of axiology. And then medical doctors are someone who believes and holds beliefs or aqaid or belief system, it's connected also to ontology. In other words, medicine is part and parcel of worldviews. Therefore, we need to understand. Thank you, Prof. Thank You're you welcome. very much. You're welcome. Okay, any more questions from the participants? If not, we can end here. I would like to uh, say thank you very much to our speaker, Associate mm -hmm. Prof. Dr. Abdul Raza Hashi, Head of mm -hmm. Centuries uh, Kuantan Campus. Uh, just would like to remind all the participants for the next subsequent session will be on uh, next month. 
uh, which be on 11 February, uh, 2.30 p.m. Uh, on the topic on Islam and knowledge. And please keep on uh, participating in this session and series because uh, there will be uh, marks uh, in, in the form of assessment and also participation and attendance will be, con will be contributed towards the assessment and the cumulative points marks for uh, this uh, unified course. Uh, so with that, let us end our session with Tazbeki Faras Ratul As. Thank you very much for inviting me to be with you, but I just give you only a brief overview. The details, inshallah, I will send the links, the recorded videos, inshallah, to Dr. Shaiful and also to CBS for your further reading, inshallah. Not it. Thank you, Prof. Shukran. Shukran. Thank Salam you, everyone. Take care. Okay. Okay. okay.